was, uh, that was, they are, they're considered to be the most polite people in the world, Canadians, you hear that all the time, oh they're so polite, they are, they're very polite in Canada, not in Singapore, they are, in Canada they don't even heckle out loud at gigs you do, yeah they have a suggestion box, they write their heckles down, that's, that's how polite Canadians are. They don't shout out heckles, they write them down and pop it in the box there. Oh, okay, there we go, we'll pop that in the box there for you. <laughs> oh, good, here we go. Your shit, get off. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thanks very much, Canada. <laughs> Some of you may recognise me uh, from Tinder. <laughs> if you're aged between 18 and 55. <laughs> If you're male or female. <laughs> if you've been anywhere I've been in the last 10 minutes within 100 kilometres. I am addicted to that stuff. I am, I am addicted to all online dating websites. I am on every single one. I apologise, every free online dating website. I am on Uber. I am on... <laughs> Grab. Amazon. <laughs> Carousel. <laughs> eBay. You gotta be careful though, I found out the hard way that uh, some of them are a little bit misleading. I found out the hard way that Grinder <laughs> is not an application for fellow lovers of coffee. No. <laughs> that was not how I took my large black. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> I like this, it's like it's like an orchestra. You can leave your you can leave your notes here. And then... Every time I do a dick joke. <laughs> I, do, I do like America, Chris. Fucking America. America. Especially like New York. I just wish there was some kind of t-shirt I could buy to tell people about it. You know what I never seem to find the right way to convey my emotions about this. So. I do like America, I love the enthusiasm in America as well. People are very enthusiastic, you've got a you-can-do-it attitude, you know. I, I spend a lot of time in America and, and I get confused as well. People get confused uh, about my name there because in Australia everyone knows Magus. Magus, you understand my name, Magus. In America they think my name's Max because we don't pronounce the letter R the way Americans do. In Australia we're a bit lazy. We're like, Magus. It's too much effort to do an R, R, or it's like you have to grab your tongue, or, 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 or. it's like too much, like you're, you're, like you're stepping over something every time you say the letter R, it's like I'm going to drive my car down to the bar, it's really far, like that's, it's too much effort, we're a bit lazy in Australia, it sounds like we're getting a stitch in our side every time we say the letter R, ah, ah, I'm going to drive my car, down to the bar, it's really far, that's how. <laughs> and I was, in, I was in a Starbucks, a Starbucks, and, uh, and I was in a Starbucks waiting for my coffee, and I was waiting for a coffee, and they're standing there, I was the only one in there, and they're shouting out, Max, Max, your coffee, Max, and he's not here. And uh, I'll have what he's having, though. Uh, <laughs> Max, 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 Max. 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 But I love the attitude, everyone's positive. I was positive you can do it in America, it's fucking awesome. I spend a lot of time in California, I like to have a good drink with a couple of friends of mine, and the next day I'm like, you know, I'm going to go for a jog. I think I might go for a jog. Yeah, get over this hangover, I might go for a jog. My friend says, yeah, Marcus, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I know I can do it. I was just letting you know what I'm going to be doing for the next 20 minutes. I, um, I've jogged before. <laughs> Marcus, I have faith in you. Get out there, Marcus. Sunshine, God bless America. It's gonna be awesome, dude, Marcus. Get out there, Marcus. Go for a jog. Put in the best goddamn effort you've ever given that jog. I'm like, yeah, dude, just chill. I'm just letting you know where I'm gonna be. I'm just going for a little run. That's all. You don't need to fucking write a blog. It's all right. Marcus, you know what? You've inspired you today, Marcus. I'm gonna take you down for it. I'm gonna come jogging with you. Okay, you don't have to. I'd rather you not. But there's a fine, Marcus. We got kayaks. We got bicycles. We got the we got the rollerblades. We got the Fitbit. We got the Map My Run, Marcus. We're gonna have an awesome day. We're gonna work on our abs today, Marcus. It's gonna be a fantastic. And if I got 20 people checked in on Facebook, Marcus, we got a group together, Marcus. It's gonna be great. There's gonna be a whole team. Yeah, here we go, Marcus. Let's go. It's gonna be good. Yeah. It's a bit too much, you know. <laughs> 
enthusiastic, but it's a bit over the top. That's why I like it when I go back to Australia. People are a bit more down to earth. They're a bit more laid back, a bit more realistic about life, you know? Oh, I think I might go for a jog. Yeah, you should, you fat cunt. <laughs> Good to see you too, Mum. <laughs> I um, I'm staying in a hotel, and uh, and I'm not happy about it. To be honest, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a hippie. I'm a bit of a green person, and I don't like to see waste. I don't like to see wasted. You know, I don't like it. Uh, I just want a simple thing. I just want a bed, just a shower. That's all I need. You know, just, that's it. Just one person. So I need, but no, you come to Singapore, oh, oh gotta, gotta bloody look after the people, gotta give them two bloody queen size beds. What a waste of linen, you know, that's stupid. It's annoying. Two big beds, just one person. Don't need that, do I? One person. I just want a shower. No, but what's in my room? A stupid bloody bathtub. Like it's almost a jacuzzi, like this whole table can fit in there. It's ridiculous. It's pointless. What a waste of water. It's annoying. Yeah? I don't even drink, but they've got complimentary drinks in the bar. I don't want any of that shit. That's pissing me off. It's a waste. I want to go to use the gym. I want to go for a little swim. I say, oh, is there a gym center? Is there a pool? And they say, yeah, there's a pool. Oh, it's up on the roof. You have to go onto the roof outside to use a pool. I want some privacy while they do a little bit of exercise. But no, everyone's up there with their selfie sticks hanging over the edge trying to take stupid photos across the city on this giant, ridiculous-looking building. It's pissing me off. And they give me two keys. Why do I need two keys to a stupid room that I don't need? It's a waste of plastic. To room 105 in this stupid big hotel, I must well just throw that key away. I don't need it. Get that stupid key out of here to room 105 where I just want to go back later and relax in my... <laughs> I, I don't take up much room in a bed, I just want like one bed, I can put them together, like you can all bloody come really, but I don't want them. Just 11 pm, I'll be back there trying to sleep. Jacuzzi, <laughs> noisy, and the party, and the massage, they give you everything, it's ridiculous. And then 105 at the. <laughs> I did that joke two nights ago at a, at a different venue and then some, some lady shouted out the back, Tell us where the hotel is and we'll come! <laughs> it, was, it was just a joke. I actually gave you my uh, MRT ticket. Can I, can I get that? That's got like four, I get four rides left. And they give me 10 cents or something. I, I think there's like... I think I have three or four rides left, and then they'll give me like a little, like 10 cents off, so that's cool. That's, that'd be great. Appreciate that. <laughs> I, I did stay in a hotel. I was in a hotel the other night, and, uh, and it, was, it was really funny when I, when I got to the hotel. Because um, I, I checked in, and then I uh, said, oh, do you have a gym? And they looked at me and thought, well, really? Do you, do you use it? Like, Touche. <laughs> and they said, no, we don't have a gym, but we do have a yoga room. No, what you have there is a room. <laughs> I think you'll find that is just considered a room anywhere in the world. That's, that's not a yoga room, that is just a room. That is uh, a bunch of walls, and uh, there's a thing called a door, which then makes it a room. And it's fucking empty. <laughs> That's not a yoga room, that's a room. I wake up out of my bed, I look at that empty space next to my bed, I don't call that a yoga room. I say, there's room for yoga, but that's not a yoga room, that is a floor. <laughs> I wish I hadn't been able to call something a yoga room years ago, like back in the university days when you couldn't afford any furniture and you go, like, oh, let me just show you my, my yoga house. <laughs> Are you poor? No, I'm just very spiritual. <laughs> Welcome to my yoga house. <laughs> we have uh, we have we have some Latinos on tonight. That was pretty cool. I like that. Hola, cómo estás? Me llamo Marco Shankar. 
soy comediante de Australia y yo presentar para todas las personas eh, solo en inglés. I, um, I spent the last year and a half traveling through Central and South America doing stand-up comedy because I have a shit agent. <laughs> I was, and I was doing shows all through there, and it was quite weird getting to learn the Latin culture versus the Australian culture, because in Australia, how do we say hello? How do we say, it's just like, Chubby Jane, mate, there you go. That's pretty cold, isn't it? It's pretty cold. The British, we come from the British, you know, that's what we are, that's like the Australian way. We're very much like the British, we're also very cold and distant, like the British. I'm sure, hello, yes, you can touch my hand if you like that. That's kind of it, that's it. Like, we are geographically cold and distant as well. We are, we have a big body of water around us in Australia, and that's kind of it, you know, like you can shake my hand if you can reach across the ocean, that's about it. Don't come near me, keep away with your plants and your fruits and your immigrants, fuck off. That's how it is in Australia. But the Latin culture, it's amazing. I didn't realise how they were. I mean, the Latinos, they're so, ooh, what out. I thought they were flirting with me. Every time I spoke to somebody, I got a hug and a kiss off the men and the women. It was amazing. It was, it was very hard to get used to, you know? It was quite, quite difficult. And I realised that they're not very friendly, warm people. It's just they've always got a cigarette in one hand and a glass of wine in the other. <laughs> They've just never got a hand free to shake your hand. That's it. So, voila! <laughs> the Irish, the Irish, they're very cold in Ireland as well. They just, it's so cold in Ireland, they don't even take their hands out of their pockets. So, so, they talk with their eyebrows over there. Oh, there, how you doing there? Come around the <laughs> Do you know how Riverdance first started? <laughs> Riverdance first started when a Latino tried to hug an Irishman. <laughs> oh, all hell broke loose. Fucking get the fuck away from me! Fuck off you! Fuck off you! Fuck off And in America, fucking, how do you guys say hello? They just, uh, they put, grab that pussy! Alright, too much. <laughs> It's so good to be here in Asia, to be honest. Uh, I'm having a great time. It's nice to be back in Singapore. Uh, I was here about six years ago doing gigs. And, and I've gigged in 40 countries around the world, and I love doing this as a job. But one of the, one of the weirdest questions I get from people is they say, oh, so you go to all these, these non-English speaking countries, do you have to learn the local language? Do you have to learn? I was like, do you think I'm learning a new language every time I go to a country just to tell dick jokes? No. <laughs> No, I was just in Thailand. There is no way I'm going to speak Russian. Oh my god. <laughs> we get looked after though. Got looked after. I got to fly on a pretty fancy airline, I must say. I'm not going to brag, but uh, we're in Asia. Asia is a continent, and I flew Air Asia, so I assume <laughs> when a continent has its own airline. <laughs> Kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. I, uh, I want to. I want to point out, uh, like, uh, you know, I was staying in hotels and the airlines. It's all, not all fancy, all right. It's not all fancy. I was doing. I was doing these gigs. This is true. I was doing gigs all through Central and South America. Now to do this, I had to stay in hostels because I can't afford to stay in hotels for a year and a half. Okay. I stayed in backpacker hostels. You meet a lot of weird people in hostels, right? You meet a lot of people who are on a journey. Yeah, on a journey. It's on a journey. My name's Jamie, I'm on a journey. It's my God-given name, I know. God gave me my name, he said, go on a journey, Jamie, go. Go on a journey. Jamie with a G, because it's different. <laughs> and they are, and they, they ask you these stupid questions. They are, they meet you and they, you don't want to talk to them and they ask you these stupid questions. They're like, oh my god, oh, you're in a dream, Marcus. You're in a dream. Did you find yourself on your dream? You found yourself? 
It's like I found myself stuck here talking to you. <laughs> if you could be anywhere in the world, Marcus, if you could be anywhere in the world, where would you be? I'd probably be about three meters over there, <laughs> talking to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. You have to deal with these people, you know, in these hostels. Yeah, like after a while, you get sick of these conversations because everyone's got the same thing to say. Which way are you going? You're going north, you're traveling south. You're going, oh, you're staying here. Did you do that? Did you climb this? Did you do that? Did you see that? And in Latin America, it gets pretty boring. If you've never been to Central and South America, it's fucking repetitive. Because the Spanish are lazy. When they got to South America, they thought, okay, okay, here we go. We shall put up a cathedral. Okay, yeah, perfect. Cathedral and uh, plaza. Okay, perfecto. <laughs> Cathedral, plaza. Eh, hey, fucking why not? Okay, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. <laughs> Every city looks exactly the same. And you get sick of going to see cathedrals or plazas, that's it. Every city is this fucking tourism. Oh, cathedral, plaza. Cathedral plaza. Cathedral plaza. You don't want to do it. You start sitting in your in your in your foyer of the hostel, listening to music. You're not listening to music. You just don't want anyone to come near you or talk to you. You're listening to all the conversations, but you're just putting your headphones in, just so no one talks. To you. And then these then these gorgeous girls from Scandinavia, Germany, somewhere check in, and they're all bright and fresh faced, and they've just got off the plane, and they're all they're like oh fucking young and gorgeous, and they get in, and they're like oh hi, we're looking to go see the cathedral. Does anybody want to come? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about doing the same. Yeah, I was just on my way. Actually, that'd be great. Yeah. But I can't lie, you know. Like it's a nice bit. It's, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit older than most people that stay in hostels now. Yeah, I'm in my mid twenties, and <laughs> I don't have anything in common with these people. I can't talk to these gorgeous young girls. I can't talk to them because I don't have. Because when I first started travelling, we had different things in life, you know. We had things like books and conversations. <laughs> with real people about real things. I had one of the first ever digital cameras that held about five photographs. <laughs> and you had to put them onto a CD, and then you had to carry them around in a wallet, and if you lost that, you're screwed, you know? And your parents gave you these uh, fanny packs to carry all your possessions in. And, the, and those pants that were like zip-off shorts, yeah? Because they said that was good for you. The only thing that was good for was them not having grandchildren overseas. <laughs> Because that was a guarantee no girl was ever going to fuck you. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what I'm thinking? There's something strange. We have real questions in life, you know? We ask real important questions in life, like, what am I supposed to do with a traveller's check? Stuff like that. <laughs> These girls, they talk to you and they go, oh, oh and, uh, and Marcus, and where are you from? <laughs> I'm from 1979, just fuck off. <laughs> but I was doing the shows in these cities and I had to try and promote my shows to these people, the same people that were staying in the hostels, so I was putting up posters in these hostels. Around town, people started recognising me. And the same girls would come up and they'd look at me and they'd say, Oh, Marcus, yours are communion. <laughs> And are you famous? <laughs> Am I famous? <laughs> Let me answer that question for you. I'm currently sleeping on the bunk bed above yours. <laughs> Am I famous? <laughs> I'm currently holding on to the railing for dear life uh, because I do not have travel insurance. So, uh, I'm currently waiting for that guy over there in this 20-bed dormitory to leave the room so I can steal some pages out of his Shantaram novel. Because I want to take a shit and there is no toilet paper <laughs> in my hostel. <laughs> I'm currently waiting for you to leave your bed so that I can steal your bed sheets so that I can have a shower because I do not want to pay a dollar to rent another stupid towel at this stupid party hostel. Am I famous? And I fall off the bunk and I'm laying on the ground in absolute agony, staring up at this poor girl. She doesn't get any of my sarcasm or <laughs> cynicism whatsoever. She's adorable. She's looking at me. Oh, you're famous. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty famous. I've got Twitter, I've got Facebook, I've got Instagram. Check it out. And then we had sex. <laughs> Whatever, it's my story, I'm going with it. I said, who's your daddy? Yeah, and who's your daddy? I might know the guy. I, uh, I have to go in a second. There was, um, there was one thing that I, I found in most hostels, though, that most people had in common. The first thing anyone says now, what's the first thing anybody says to you when you go to a hostel now? Where are you from? Trust Chris not to get it right. <laughs> anyone else? The Wi-Fi. Everyone wants to know about the Wi-Fi. It's like everyone's a junkie. Everyone's just hanging out to get on the Wi-Fi. That's what, that's what it's changed. Like, times have changed since I was in hostels. Everyone now just needs a fix. You see someone at a bus stop and they're going to the town you've just come from and they're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> what, what hostel? What hostel did you stay at? Oh, uh, yeah, did you have, like, was it breakfast? Yeah, good, uh, was, there a, was there a yoga room? Yeah. Was there, did, could you, did you, what, what was the Wi-Fi? Was there good Wi-Fi in the hospital? Uh, could you get Wi-Fi, like, upstairs and downstairs? Or was it just in the reception? Like, or just, did you need a password to log in? I just want to know, like, is there a plug next to your bed so you can check your house all night? Like, I just want to know, like, is your house again? I just want some It was a little bit too real, wasn't it? <laughs> that life is fucking horrible, you know? Like, I, I'm, I'm a culprit of it too. I am a culprit of the Wi-Fi thing. I, I get to a hotel here, I get to a hotel here, and I'm being heckled by a hand dryer right now. That's awesome. And, um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, fucking Romania. Fucking, <laughs> They don't just steal your wallets, they steal the last minute of your jokes. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, fuck him, I'm going to call the hand dryer on and really fuck up his good night, don't okay. care. <laughs> Fucking watch your wallets and your career, that comes after. That comes... <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> I'm standing there, I'm standing there. By the way guys, by the way, um, if you want to see me after the show, like this is my job, I make a living out of this and, and it's fucking great to interact, but um, to be honest, I can't afford to be in Singapore. I need more money. Um, I have these little I have these little eye masks, you wear them when you go to sleep, they're actually very good quality and uh, and uh, Jamie, you'll, you'll buy a fucking whole box. You'll buy a box of these because it says, shush, I'm on a journey. Um, they're $5, come see me at the door and take a photo when you want, they're really fun. Uh, and I'd like to keep in touch and let you know when I'm performing somewhere else in the world, that'd be great. Um, I, I tell you what though, I, I'm a culprit of the whole Wi-Fi thing. I was at, I was at our hotel the other day and I'm, I'm going to check in and then, and you do, you go, to, you go to check in and they start telling you all the facilities of the hotel that you could not give a fuck about. I, I've just been on a plane for 12 hours. <laughs> I need to get some Wi-Fi. <laughs> and you're checking in and there's a passport, there you go, thank you very much. Okay, oh, you have a business centre, that's great. Do I look like a fucking do business centre? <laughs> and then as they're looking down, they take eye contact, they look down at their computer and that's when you can look around and see if the Wi-Fi password is written anywhere <laughs> around behind the desk. And you're like, oh, no, maybe it's over there, I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure. And then they look at you and they go, tell me about breakfast. And you're like, I'm going to be in bed until 3 p.m., all right? And they look down at the book and then you start looking at the book as well. And then, uh, and then you start, oh, I'm just stretching. They go, oh, really? You've got a yoga room? Fuck you! And, uh, and, and then you start looking at the key, and you're like, is it written on the key? I don't know. And then you're just like, give me the fucking Wi Fi password now. <laughs> so, Wi Fi will be $24 for uh, 12 hours, and uh, fuck you! <laughs> I have to leave. Um, that's uh, yeah, that my time. We have to close up. Um, thanks very much, guys, for coming out. I'm going to finish on uh, finish on one joke because uh, Romania. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll join you guys for a drink after the show if you want. Because um, I've got nothing else to do. And, uh, <laughs> it's, 
yeah, just basically it. That's all I do for the job, I love it. But, I, uh, I, but I'm, I'm not going to join you for, for a cigarette. Just the smoke, I'm not one of those people. I'm not a smoker. For a very good reason, I got caught smoking at a very young age by my father. I come from a very small town, very traditional man. He made me smoke a full pack of cigarettes right there in front of him. My sister, unfortunately, she got caught sucking and going off. <laughs> <laughs> now I come from a very small town. <laughs> it was hard work for my dad to try and gather up 20 men willing to teach her a lesson. <laughs> Luckily my uncle chipped in, he made up the numbers there and um... It's a joke, it's a joke. It's stand-up comedy guys, it's a fucking joke, relax. I didn't even have a sister, it was my brother, bless him. <laughs> Guys, it's a pleasure to be back in Singapore. I hope to see you again sometime soon. My name's Michael Hello. I'll see you at the World Series tonight. Let's go, my time for Marcus! I was going to have to run.